So the clay that I'm passing around is the clay that I usually uh, I use when I sculpt. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of like this, this oil-based clay. I start with the, uh, like a super sculpty. And then with the years, I, I start to get some reaction to my, to my hands. So I start to get really dry because it was really, uh, the material was really plasticky. So then I, when I went to Pixar, I started to, one of the sculptors there kind of introduced me to this kind of clay. And that's an old base clay, Chevron, CM50. And that's a really nice clay until, uh, was a really nice clay until a couple of months ago. And then they changed the formula. So now it's super, super soft. I'm uh, fighting with the, especially later I was doing some work for different, for some companies. And uh, you know, when you do stuff for yourself, it's easier because you can always go back. But when you have uh, some deadlines or you have to try to eat uh, the, you know, the special character, special stylization, special forms, it's getting really tricky. It was a, it was a kind of pain in the neck. <laughs> so today we have uh, like a one and a half hour, I guess, 90 minutes. Usually I try to, I try to get um, just the feeling to work with, with the designer. So especially on Spider-Man, the last movie that I uh, want, it's not the last movie. One of the movies that uh, I work uh, last uh, two years ago, three years ago, 2017, two years ago. So usually when uh, when I do this kind of work, uh, I, they they call the they, they call me, they call other people. They, you know, we have Rafael in the room, is another talent sculptor, and uh, usually we work with the with directly with the designer. So the designer they're coming up with the with the draw with the drawing, uh, the first idea for sketches. And then uh, from the sketches, we start to work directly on, uh, onto the three-dimensional object, uh, the sculpt. And uh, the idea is to want to show you the process, the back and forth with the, with the design in a few slides. I didn't have a lot of uh, time to put together this material. I showed this, uh, um, this lecture in Paris in March so on the Spider-Man uh, way, how the approach. Uh, you can see that it's changing, especially with the, I work on Spider-Man with the Shun Kim, and the, each designer has a different takes. You know, in the room there are other, other designers really famous, maybe you recognize them. Thank you for coming, you know. Good friends, we have Peter, Nico, and Carter, and uh, I work with them in a few projects, more maybe with Peter in the Blue Sky. So the, my, this, let's say my career it was nice because I was able to move around a lot. So I worked at uh, DreamWorks for five years, and then uh, there I met uh, Nico and uh, uh, other uh, uh, Carlos Grangel, so I work with Carlos uh, on Spirit and El Dorado. We did some maquettes together. So basically, we did uh, like a, a breakthrough. For me, it was uh, you know mostly basic show around uh, uh, the will to do maquettes for for studio. Working the, with this, with this designer, with this artist, it was really nice to to be able to to learn from uh, each of, each of uh, these individual, you know, directly on the field. So it was it was pretty. Pretty incredible experience, and uh, and then obviously, it's, it's the, but the nice thing is that uh, every designer has uh, the same uh, different takes. But then I discovered with the years that everybody's looking pretty much on the same direction, the same goals, the same uh, same feeling. Obviously, different uh, people that are from uh, United States, Euro Europe, uh, so you can see the culture that they, they they come together when you work in bigger studio. That is kind of the beauty too. Try to uh, gain the res this respect. You know, it takes year to get the respect of the design, and then when they when they let you do it. And the spider was um, a, I knew I met Shun through schoolism. We did uh, a schoolism, a schoolism in uh, uh, in Toronto. Maybe I should let go. This, uh, uh, we did a schoolism in Toronto. I hope it works. Ah. Um, and then, uh, you know, we start to talk about, he was working on Zootopia at the time. You know, I start to kind of uh, criticize his design. It was a little bit too much uh, like a milk call. It was coping too much. <laughs> I start to, and then they say, yeah, no, I know, I know, I'm sorry, Andrea, no, I know, I <laughs> know. But then, no, it was, it, was, it, was really, it was really, it was a nice chemistry, nice uh, uh, bond. And then, uh, you know, after a couple of years, uh, he, he gave me a call and then uh, to, because he went to Sony from Disney Life, he went to Sony to work on Spider-Man, and then uh, you know he asked me if I was working. Rafael was already working on the on the project, and um, they wanted to different takes. I don't know. It was a little bit you know on the clouds, 
So it was kind of cool to to be able to to join the team and uh, you know and be able to to work on this project. I'm not a really big fan of uh, comic book uh, characters, so when they, when they told me Spider, I was like, oh, come on, this is a superhero. You know, this is a, I was like. Oh. But then I liked the guy, and I said, okay, now that would be nice to work together. <laughs> oh, come on, really? It was like, <laughs> so I said, okay, now let's do, let's do the spy. So basically, I, I start, uh, I, no, no, we start, um, uh, so this, the first clip, they're pretty long. So and then, I, you know, it's going to go faster. So I apologize for, uh, for the timing. <laughs> and uh, so um, just to, so, okay, before getting there, I work for us. Uh, for uh, uh, okay, Dreamers, uh, Disney. I did uh, Get a Horse was a short. Uh, I worked with Eric Goldberg, and when I started to do animation, you know, Eric Goldberg was one of the designers that uh, I, I I really admire. Then uh, you know, I worked with this guy. Maybe you know you know his work. Huh? Yeah, I don't have to say anything. You know, really good friend. Uh, <laughs> I think the character good. Oh, no, no, Peter said no. Nico Malay. Okay. <laughs> this is all all uh, all the character design. So. No, but no. Obviously, from from each of these uh, artists, uh, I, lo I learn a lot. This is another guy that you know is really inspiring. He's in the room. He's in the house, and uh, uh, really incredible. Uh, you know, incredible the shapes, the design, you know, the silhouette, all these things. It uh, start to get. It um, start to kind of bond. You know, even when you go to a museum, start to see artists, you start to appreciate uh, all these things and start to put it together and try to do your own your own art. It's, it was a piece that I did for. Uh, the 200th anniversary of um, uh, Frankenstein. This was uh, when another designer that I worked closely on uh, the Shadow King, uh, Heidi Schmidt. And uh, each one is uh, particularly different. You know, this was a, a personal take that I did on uh, El Topo. They asked me to do some commission, so I was uh, developing. I worked with Jodorowsky on, the, on this sculpture. This was a personal piece that I did uh, uh, at the zoo. So I like to. When I was younger, I was going to the zoo with some friends, like Gabriele, you know, and other people in London. We were doing, uh, you know, studies, sketches, uh, you know, try to, um, uh, you know, critique ourselves, try to push ourselves, try to, you know, learn from ourselves. You know, at the time when I started, there was no internet, so the only thing that we could, we, where we could learn, was in the museum, or, or maybe you find this kind of article, this book, uh, you know, on animation. You start to. Uh, study the, the 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 frame and the book just to try to understand how they did it. So, you know, I start as a traditional artist and, and then I move on uh, doing more uh, uh, traditional sculpting for for the studios. And uh, this was a prototype that I did for a video game company. So I, I worked for two three game games. Bioshock was was the first uh, no the second game that I worked. The first was Layer. Because before I moved from basically from the West Coast to the East Coast, and then come back to the West Coast, so I was in Los Angeles, New York for Blue Sky. I worked three three years on Ice Age and Robots, and then I went back. When I went back, I I started to work more for video games, try to do different things, see a different path. And then during the video game, I was doing more like 3D modeling, and then start to do like prototype like this one that you see. It was no try to learn. To do more, uh, more and more uh, uh, stylized character. Those are personal takes. Uh, on uh, it starts with the Batman because my neighbor was uh, is kind of uh, you know was kind of stocky guy over 50. He started to get to it in this kind of oh, let's do triathlon. You know, we, we, we went with the bicycle together, with the bikes together a couple of times. And they said, you know, we should do triathlon. And said, dry triathlon. And they were saying, oh, come on, I, I never did triathlon when I was 20. I'm 50. I'm gonna do triathlon now. Are you crazy? So I start to, so I start to think about the glory days. So I start to the Batman. So I start to because he liked Batman. So I did the Batman. Then with Batman, I start to do the Wonder Woman. Then I did the Thor. Then I did the Captain America. You can see some of the sculpture, you know, in the booth that I have here. And uh, obviously, you know, the uh, from picture is difficult to to tell a story. It's better when, when you see the original one. And um, then a collaboration with uh, Mike Mignola. This was funny because uh, I started. Somebody asked me to do, to do. A, I don't tell the name, but uh, somebody asked me to do this kind of uh, uh, commission. So he commissioned me the, the he commissioned the, the piece, and then I, I start to. I get close. I got really excited, and then uh, the commission didn't go anywhere. So I got a little bit fed up, and then I post a little um, a little face of the the old boy. And then uh, Peter saw it on Instagram, and uh, 
And uh, he said, no, but why you, why, why you don't do a limited run? You know, why you don't ask Mignola? So I didn't know Mignola at the time. So Peter kind of introduced me to Mike, and then uh, we did this kind of limited run uh, um, with the sculptor. So, so this is kind of, uh, you know, collaboration that can start, you know, from nothing. So you have to try to don't be frustrated when uh, some, maybe a commission doesn't go anywhere. So maybe it can go in another direction. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's good to be able to, to keep the motivation up. That is, uh, it's difficult. It's difficult for everybody. I have the same problem. Even lately, I say, "What? Are, why I'm still doing this stuff?" You know? <laughs> but thanks to you guys, you know, you gave me the motivation to keep doing it because uh, people are still interesting. This was another, uh, not, not let's say co collaboration in a way that uh, no, I like Uli Meyer. He's a German artist. He's working in London. He's really talented. Really kind of Ronald Searle style. And that, when I saw the drawing, I really liked it, so I, I, did, this, I did the sculpt. And then I sent the, I sent the picture of him of the sculpture, and then he sent me the original drawing, because I sent him a cast. So, you know, you can get a nice gift, too, sometime. <laughs> With Nico, it's the same. You know, I did the dragon, he gave me the drawing of the dragon, so it was a uh, good, good deal. And then this was a personal piece. Uh, so I did the, I put, I put together a small selection. Then this one started as, um, as a, like an online class, so I did the Rhino. It was the first, uh, uh, first time that I was doing an online class, the, live, with other people on the other side of the screen, so it was really, it was really difficult. I, I'm not gonna do it again anymore, because, uh, <laughs> because it was really, especially because uh, it's difficult to transfer what you are doing in your studio to other people when they're doing themselves, and then they never did the sculpting before. So that was the, was the tricky part. But at the end of the day, the student, they, they were three, three students, they came up with a really nice, uh, really nice final piece. You know, for people that start from scratch, I, I was pretty, pretty impressed. But then I said, that's it. I'm not going to do any more. So that was the, the Rhino was the first. And then I started to do, no, I always love Robin Hood. So I started to do the Robin Hood, started to do another. And then at the end, I have the, then I said, it would be nice to have all the, the characters there. So I started to do all the lineup, almost. I didn't finish, you know, but. Uh, this was a take, a take on uh, Milko, especially because I, I really love the, the, the design of Milko. And, uh, you know, everybody of us took from, uh, from Milko, from the old uh, illustrators. It was really, really inspiring to, to try to, to see this old movie in the 70s coming alive on, uh, on a maquette stage. And uh, this is the clay. So obviously, when you see the clay and then you see the final product, it's changed a little bit. But with the silicone mold, usually I, I cast uh, all the sculpt that, uh, that I do. Or the one that you see in the boot, you know, they are all cast by myself. So I do, I do all the process from the clay to the to the final uh, to the final product. This was the, the inspiration from the drawing, and then um, I did the, the obviously you sketch it, you try to give a pose, you try to make sure that the pose, uh, you know, is in the balance, but it kind of give the same feeling of the of the drawing. Then obviously this was the really really first first rough. And the, you know, see there may be some parts of the sculpture that are missing, but the, when I start to see that the sculpture start to materialize, start to see the character, you know, I can always feel that the I'm on the right path. And those sketches are pretty, they're pretty fast sometimes. Sometimes they can go, you know, today I'm gonna try to do something. Uh, you know, I did a little sketch before, and um, uh, I tried to do from, the, from a little sketch, uh, an idea, and then I do directly in, uh, in clay. Most of the time I do, when I do my stuff, I do directly in clay. This is more fun to play with the shape, you know, change uh, uh, the proportion, uh, push the, uh, the limbs maybe, you know, play around. This was, uh, you know, a, 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 I did it in ZBrush, then I printed. It was just a test just to see how you, do, how you can transfer a drawing, a 2D drawing in CG and then vice versa. From CG for something that looks in three dimension, but it's not three dimension. Bring it to the three dimensionality. So I print it out. It's funny because when when uh, it's, I did it twice already, when you print it, you start to see stuff that uh, if you if I would have done in clay, I would have changed it. So it's, it's, so the eyes is, is kind of tricky sometimes when you do directly in uh, in uh, in the computer. For this, you know, Spiderman was was a process uh, that uh, was pretty inter interesting for me because. Uh, I kind of brought back the, the idea to do a sketch in clay and then scan it and then bring it to the director, send it to the director. Now I have a scanner so I can scan the really quick sketch and then send it to the company so they can see in the computer the 3D object. So they can put it in the environment, they can put it, they can lead it, they can see exactly 
like uh, almost 90, 98% of the scope that I have at home in San Francisco, they can see there. And then I was thinking, maybe, maybe even with the VR, they can take the OBJ important in VR, medium, and they can see the scope there. They can touch, but, you know, but at least they have it there, you know, they can see in the environment. So it's, uh, this was like an, an exercise, you know. And um, you know, I, I love the design, so I tried to push it in, uh, in CG. This, was, this is a personal project that I started uh, in 2015. I don't know if I will ever finish, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> so the goal is to at least to have a shot, to have a scene, because I'm building all the set. This was the preparatory set. And then I start to, so the, the gondola is set in Venice in the 1700s. So the gondola is all uh, uh, sculpted by, in clay. And then I cast it, and then I paint it. Then uh, the set is all, uh, it's almost like a theater set that you build like just the facade, behind there's nothing. But then you have to create the feeling of the, the reality. So every, everything has to kind of combine together, the, the harmony, you know, every, everything has to flow. It was kind of funny to, because I did it uh, at the art school when I was in, uh, in Milan. I did uh, stage design, I studied stage. So we were doing this kind of small uh, uh, miniature uh, set. And that kind of, it kind of brought me back to this kind of uh, interesting uh, uh, technique to build something uh, that uh, kind of mimic the reality, but you know, it's a small set, a small house with a lot of little hinges. So I sculpted the hinges, I did the door, and uh, the first door was in, uh, in, in wood. And then I said, that is the first door in wood. And then I, I did the door, I sculpted the door in clay, then cast, painted to do a fake wood. Uh, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Then, then the facade was all in plaster. Then I started to carve the plaster, paint it with the acrylics to give it the, uh, almost the texture of the old Venice. I don't know if you guys have been to Venice. You know, it's all mold, so the smell. Almost like feeling the smell through the, through the plaster. You know? It was, was kind of interesting. I, th I think the story is nice. No, because I did, this was uh, from uh, a drawing that Peter did uh, on, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, Ice Age, right? It was the first one? Ice Age, Ice Age yeah. yeah. Have you seen Ice Age, maybe? No, no, yeah. Uh, so I did this sketch, it was really, really nice, really, really nice rough. And I kind of like uh, the roughness of Peter, especially because uh, he has uh, a lot of lines, so you have to pick the, the good ones. So sometimes it's not easy to pick the right line. <laughs> When you do a rough, <laughs> uh, no, I, I know, I know. No, too many lines. You see, you have to simplify. No, but, no, but it was a it was a funny sculpt to do. No, we're still debating with the translucency of the eyes because it's difficult to get a really super like watery effect with this kind of uh, clear raisin because I think it's the volume. So I'm still debating how how can I get super uh, transparent. So, it's really, yeah. so I think it's the the, the thickness of the material. Because if it's really thin, you can see through. Otherwise, you, you get the opacity of the material, and that's it. I have another funny story, but, but you know, I don't tell, because uh, the Peter is here. So. <laughs> Maybe next, uh, no. No, no. OK, so then we go to, OK, so this was a little bit, uh, you know, some, some of the work. And uh, this was this, the, the approach that we did with Spider-Man. So this was the final clay, and then what Shun uh, wrote about, uh, you know, by, by the collaboration. It was really nice because I think it was the first, uh, um, uh, when I did this one, they start to see how to translate this kind of uh, graphics. Raffaello, did, you did some tests with the line, uh, you know, from the Alberto first uh, take, yeah. And then they went uh, completely in a different direction because they obviously, you know, sometimes when you work on production, the director change, the production design change. So everybody changes, new people come in, different takes. You know, it's an organic process. You have to get used to, to take that as organic. You know, sometimes you get a, shit, I did a pretty good job. Why are they changing over there? But, you know, it's still, it's still doing it, so they're still changing. So, but, uh, uh, but you know, it's, it's an interesting process. You know, you have to, I remember that if, uh, Carlos was telling me once when I was working on, uh, on Chartel, I was doing, uh, Chartel was a pretty ambitious project, project, so we were doing like this big uh, shark, uh, you know, big uh, white shark, and have you seen the movie, you know, they did Don Lino, so I did all this shark in Super Scott, it was a pain in the, I don't know how I did it. Yeah, I don't know how we were able to sculpt with Super Scott. It was harder. It was harder than, 
with the Shavon, right? It's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah but we were pretty good. I don't know, because I, I try I tried lately. It's like, geez, I, I was able to... No. Not just the age. They changed. Ah, they changed. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm glad. So, so we, were, we were good, too. Okay, but yeah. So we did this big shark, then we did a few meetings, I was getting back and forth. And then, I, you know, I was, one day I was so pissed off, and then Carlos said, no, Andre, you have to learn how to have a, a shark skin. I said, what do you mean shark skin? I said, no, you know, the big white shark, they have a thick skin. They have all this scarf, but they, they, they you know, when they get by, they, they, they can't get through the, the skin. And then, you know, four years I was going with this skin, with this skin stuff, what you Then I went, um, I worked on another project with uh, Henry Selig, you know, and uh, with him, it's pretty tough to work. So, after I was and then I discovered about the shark skin. So, so <laughs> it's funny because one day I printed out, say, remember the shark skin, and I put it there in front of my, just to don't get pissed off because uh, we were changing sculpt for, you know, I don't know. I never changed so many sculpts when I was working with Henry, you know. But then, but then I discovered that um, it's, it's part of his process, you know, because he's uh, developing with your sculpt, so you don't have to take a person. You must, no, sometimes it's not easy. When you, one day you are at the top of the hill, the next day you are at the bottom of the hill. And then you turn, no, but we were at the top. So no, no, we were at the top, we were at the bottom. What do you mean? No, yes, we were. And everybody's quiet in the meeting, say, come on. Nobody remember, and as I said, everybody's quiet, say, shit, bastard. You know, so, so, <laughs> so, so, you know, up and down, the sharp skin. So with the years, I start to get, uh, I start to develop this little, I was, maybe I, my skin is like this. Now, you know, no, but then at the end of the day, you know, you have, to, you have to aim your goals. And then when you get your goals, you achieve your goals, you did what you have to do. You know? And then you just, you know, what is coming more is coming. For, so you don't take, you know, if you, you do it, you do it. If you don't do it, uh, that's it. You know, somebody else is going to do it. So, so this was the final uh, maquette. Then I want to show you the, uh, the so this was the, the sketch that uh, Shun gave me when, uh, so the beginning was really, was a kind of really stylized. I kind of like the, the we, we wanted to push the, the style more elongated. You know, he was really skinny. This is, this is um, uh, was it Parker? Yeah, Peter Parker, you see it now. <laughs> Peter Parker, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so really elongated, more the proportion, we're pushing. So, so I start to, usually I get, the, I get the drawing, then I start to sketch it, and then when I get, uh, the, the feeling that uh, we, are, we are close to the, to the sketch. So I show it, uh, uh, you know, working remotely. When I'm in the studio, it's easier because, you know, you're there, you show it to the designer. We work, we change, uh, we cut, move, shift, everything. And, uh, but when you are far away, it's difficult. So you have to usually do like a turnaround, uh, take picture, different picture. And then uh, the designer uh, pick uh, the, the pose and they start, to, they start to draw on top. They do like a, um, some design they do like a rendering, and I can't see anything when they do the render because you have to kind of flip it. It's better when, for me when, uh, when uh, they do this kind of line, then they start to indicate uh, you know, some notes, they start to give some notes, uh, and uh, sometimes they put a question mark. Question mark means that you have to do like this, it's not that you have maybe, no, no, you have to do it. <laughs> I discover it later. Tony Fucini and I was doing this one on one of the first cops of the insect. Maybe uh, the shift here. Then I didn't do it. And then why, why, why you didn't do the no? I said, you know, this was a, no, no, yeah, okay, but was, maybe we should do it, you know. Huh? He said, okay. So maybe it's not maybe, maybe, it's ba maybe you have to do it, you know. It's just a polite way, polite way to the, you, know, you have to do this. So. So they give you a no, so you start to squash, change, then you move it and you start to move it more. Then I remember we did uh, like a torsion, and then, uh, no, maybe, can we open? Yeah, this, this is funny, because when you connect to the base, so you start to aim, okay, so I have the pause, and then I say the director or somebody else, okay, maybe it would be nice to open the legs. And then the arm, is, so it start to, it's a fuck. And so, it's, so, so you start to change, because it's not just moving the legs, everything, everything's in relationship. So I start to, ch even in the rough stage, it start to change, uh, the way or the proportion, you know? And then especially when you, when you do, when you take picture, they think that uh, sometimes the, the legs are too short. I remember I did one, you remember? <laughs> I did one and then it started to let in, then it started to levitate, you know? <laughs> then it started to get bigger, and then when they see, no, but it's too tall, yeah, but no, so it, then we go back down, then it starts to, <laughs> so the sculpt is like, it's continuous like. 
<laughs> with this one was we were going in that kind of direction. So I said, okay, sure, but maybe. So, so you start to block it out. You block it with it again, and then uh, we we start to work. So you, before is the, the overall, and they start to nail more inward. So we go more in kind of. Uh, you know, the, uh, the proportion, the, the pause, uh, the, so we went a little bit faster. But so then uh, when, when, when we get the overall, for example, in Spider-Man, they start to, the, the, the costume was pretty important to nail the line of the costume, follow the, because uh, in Spider-Man was, uh, basically we had, the, so I had the, the uh, art director, production designer, character designer, the directors, there were two at the time, then came the new guy, the third one. And then they were, when the, everybody was happy, the producer, when everybody was happy, they were there to show it to the uh, license. So to, who, who has the license on Spider-Man? Uh, Marvel? No. Yeah, so to the Marvel people. And then you have to make the, this guy, and then they, if they had the notes, so they, they come back to you, and then you re-go back to this, to the, you know, ta -ta 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 -ta, until everybody's happy. So this one was a little bit, uh, especially because it was the first one, so it was, uh, it took, uh, Maybe I don't know four or five weeks between the back and forth, and then we came to the to the mask and the logo. That was another the funny story. So you start. So I start to do one uh, one one variation. So you basically you, usually when I do the uh, the line drawing, I trace. Uh, so I, I I do I do a sketch on a kind of a paper, and then I trace on top of the skull. So you start to draw the mask. So I did the first time, and then I did the same stuff. Now, can you do a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit lower? So it, it, you spend like four hours to do this. Okay, so you go down, send it back. So maybe now, maybe one eye could be a little bit close, the squint, a little bit higher, the angle. Of that. So after I don't know four, three or four takes, then I, I thought, okay, so maybe. And then I thought I, I thought to use the uh, even with the spider, the spider, the logo. Sometimes was too big or too short. Now in the center, move it here, move it there. So I, I, I had this kind of transparent paper. So with the market, I, I draw the, 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 the logo. And with that, I was able to shift everything in a, in a really fast, you know, couple of times. And, then, and they were laughing. When they saw this stuff, they started to laugh. And look at it. You know, because you know, when you work with people with different uh, opinion, you have to <laughs> play. You know, and they, they, they kind of laugh. But they, then we found the right alignment. And then it was, uh, you know, and then it was a, a kind of a smooth. Uh, you know, you know. You see, from the first drawing to this drawing, it became more heroic because they want to be more heroic. So it start to change. Uh, the sculpture is changed. The sculpture is changed until the end. So then, when when it's approved, obviously you have to preserve it. So the idea is to uh, do a, like a plaster mold. This is like, it's called a jacket. So you, I'm building like a, a plaster jacket on top of the uh, traditional sculpture. And then uh, I don't show all the process. Otherwise, you don't come to my workshop. So this, uh, <laughs> so this is just a, a quick, uh, you know, idea. So you have, a, so basically, you do a, a plaster mold, and uh, you you release the the sculpture. So you have to cut the silicone. There's a way to cut the rubber, and then uh, you know you you release uh, the sculpture, get destroyed, and then you clean everything, reclose everything. And obviously, when when the the pose is simpler, it's easier to do the mold. This was a pretty pretty simple mold. So it's easy. So you then you close and then you pour. Uh, it's like a, a, a raisin, uh, uh, liquid raisin. It's like I'm, I'm using the smooth cast. It's like two part A and B that you have to mix exactly the same uh, uh, quantity. And then uh, you stir it. Then you pour it in. I have a pressure tank. So basically, the pressure tank allowed to because when you pour it in, you create bubble when you mix the material. So the pressure tank kind of release the bubbles from the from the from the mold. So sometimes I do like a channels. For example, in the arms, I did some uh, channels that uh, channels that are like a little uh, uh, holes in the silicone, so the so the the flow, the raising can go all around. And this, uh, you know, we are taking from so basically all this stuff is coming from uh, traditional bronze in uh, uh, fusion, because when you do a bronze, you have to you have one shot only, because then it get when uh, the minutes you start to pour, it start to um, start to get cold the bronze. So there's a really quick uh, time, and everything has to go in the same flow everywhere. Otherwise, it breaks. You know, it can break the mold. So it's the same thinking. We can use it for the for the resin cast. And then you start to demold it. You open it. Uh, you release it, and then you have the final uh, the final maquette. Yeah, before to this, you have to sand it. Uh, sometimes there are some holes, so you have to patch it. 
then primary user that primary it. So it's like a gray primer, and then uh, it's easier for the for the directors or or um, or the people that you know the, to see the, the shape of the the, uh, the sculpture. And then the next step that uh, we start to integrate more in uh, in um, in uh, in the process is the the scanning. So I bought a scanner like uh, four years ago, piece of junk. You could see all the lines, uh, the dots. Was like I paid like 500 bucks at the time. It was like, man, 500 bucks. And then you know you have to do a lot of work behind uh, behind the, uh, the the file. But then uh, this year I found this scanner that was is is really really good. So I'm using already for different studio. I, I did work for Warner Brothers. I, I I use it for for them for Netflix uh, for uh, you know for for Sony too. And uh, it's really it's really good. I'm not going to tell you the, the brand, but uh, maybe you can guess. But so basically, you no, know, you, you do the scan, and then you have this 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 uh, shape, and exactly the shape uh, of the sculpt. Obviously, the resolution is really really close, so it's almost like uh, let's say 90% from the sculpture. So it depends on the level of your sculpture. You can uh, then after this stage, you can start to uh, you know clean even more. Then you can start to apply some lighting. Usually, it's the first thing that uh, the, the the director of the studio can see that uh, if the sculpt is working in the in the CG environment, the, you know, the use of the silhouette, uh, so you can see them that you know the, the character can read in a different uh, environment, different lighting. And for them, it's good. Uh, for example, in, uh, um, in Netflix, I send a file, and then uh, the previous art, the previous uh, supervisor was using the scan of the, of the rough sculpture to put in the in the environment, so they could see the proportion. They can build a with exactly the same scale, because uh, this scanner was exactly the same, 100% uh, of the same scale of the sculpt that I have. Usually I send the same, so they, they can have the same feeling. And then obviously, you know, there are, you know, you, you can even go further, you can start to work more on, on the line cleanup, you know, they become more like a cleanup at this stage. But at least you have, you have the sculpt, the traditional, the physical sculpt, the CG sculpt, and then, uh, you know, there's no, uh, interpretation in theory it shouldn't be more interpretation because all the problematic we res we did it we resolve it in the f in the first stage the design and the sculpting stage in theory some people they take it some people they they, they take the sculpt they put it there they get collect dust you know they collect dust and they do their own stuff this was, I did the same experiment with Simba I did the in Sim this was an old maquette I took it because at the time we didn't have the, the scan, so we were using, uh, I think they were using, no, no, this was a 2D movie, so they were using as a reference the animator to, you know, to draw the, the character from uh, different, different difficult angles, up, up shot, down shot, you know, perspective. So it, kind of, it was kind of fun to go back to uh, one of the old sculptures that you did. This I did like 18 years ago. Then I did it with the dragon because I want to see if the level of details uh, that I did on uh, Nico's dragons, uh, they could come out. And then they came up pretty good. So I show it to Dreamers, all the, all the people that were quiet, all the models that were kind of, because obviously, you know, there was like, they were like, yeah, but no, but we, we can model. So, okay, this was like, present. I wanted to do a presentation to put on my table, that didn't work, so this is why, this I guess, it, thank you, this is the last slide, you know, so. <laughs> So I can show you, I did, uh, I did for uh, schoolism, I did. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I know, I know. A, a, an online class, I'm at the last uh, cl uh, class number nine. I have 20 minutes of record, voice recording that I have to do. And it's there since, I don't know, six months. But uh, you know, I, I will do it, I will do it. <laughs> I promise. I didn't get that. Uh, you didn't get it, I will do <laughs> So now I want to show. So, so basically, I took uh, when I did the class, when I did this kind of. Uh, let me put the class. So I show you the. So this is like a condensation of the of the nine lessons uh, in uh, seven minutes, and uh, it's gonna go. I'm kind of fast to sculpt, but I don't sculpt this fast, you know. So let me see if I, if I see it. You do full screen. 
So I took, so I took a Carter drawing. I asked somebody else before. Ooh, what did I ask? Did I ask you? No. What do you mean you didn't know? I told you. I told. <laughs> ah, yeah, the permission. <laughs> ah, you give me the right. <laughs> no, I ask. Uh, I asked somebody, but I, ah, no, I ask. Uh, Chris Sasaki, he never sent me the drawing. I asked Carter, he sent me six drawings right away. So okay, and then uh, yeah, and then I did. Uh, so basically, I did. I took this. Uh, I, I really like you no know, his design. So I think it's really simple. But it's funny because I was doing it, and then I said, "Shit, this design is not easy to do." So it was, it was kind of tricky to do it. It was difficult to to interpret, especially for uh, uh, for people that maybe they, they never sculpt. So it could be. Uh, I don't say it's difficult, but it's kind of challenging. But you know, you can kind of challenge yourself to uh, to push yourself, even if you're not at that level. Even if it's not gonna, if you take the class and it's not gonna come uh, like the version that I did, you know, you're gonna have your own version. So I you take off this stuff. Okay. But it's really because I'm, his design there is particular. You know, there are subtlety. You know, so you have to try to understand the, all these little subtlety, all these little lines, these strokes. Uh, Maybe it's a little bit more cleaner than uh, than Peter Carter, but uh, he's still doing some lines too. But now you are cleaner than Peter. <laughs> and uh, so, but, it, but it's funny because you, when you, when you do it, you you really appreciate even more the the tough that the, this amazing designer that they, they put in the drawing. We see that one drawing, you just take it like this, you know. But when you start to dissect it, it's really it's really interesting to you. You learn a lot. I learned a lot when I when I was doing this one. How do I take off the band, the band, the band? Okay, I apologize for the little. So then I have like, a, usually I have, even when I do my stuff or, or commission, I have this kind of board that I'm using like an image plane. When, if you do 3D, you, you know, you have one view. So I use that one for reference. Um, and then, uh, but when you do, when you use the drawing, you have to consider about the, the perspective too, because we are working in a three dimensional space. So it's not like flat, like in the computer. So you have a depth from uh, uh, from the sculpture to the to the to the plane. So you have to consider that one too when you do the when you use the the image plane. Then I use, I have a, like a caliper a gauge, like a, so I can measure the heights. So usually I have a compass. And the, the first rough I do I I do I do the most that I can with my with my hands. And then I start to block with uh, uh, like a wood uh, wood tool. I, I like to do a, um, I like to have a flat tool, so it's almost like a spatula, so you can cut, carving, then you can block bigger planes. And then you start to, uh, you know, obviously the, I put the, uh, the Winchester later. So secondary element, elements, I put it later. It's more like the overall first. I like to sketch the, the, the shape, the silhouette, the pose, and then I start to put more the details. So the details are the last thing. Then start to you know readjust the face. Uh, you know when I get really really tiny, I'm using a, a smaller tool like a metal tool. I have some tools here that I brought today, and uh, you know I can show you the different variety. But usually I sculpt it for four or five tools. You know I have like a one that is curved, one that is really pointy, one that uh, sometimes I do. When I did the Nikos Dragon, I did the, I, I was using like a brass pipe to do the scale, so different sides, so you can kind of. In a, almost like a stamp, and then you can re reshape the the, the 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 volume. So the, you know you can use. I, I, I like to use the, um, the a, an exactor, the the blade of the exactor because you can cut. It's really, sometimes really really sharp. So it's kind of a, you know you can find the tool anywhere. Any, anything can be a tool. You know so your finger fingertip maybe like a clip uh, tool. You know you can find the. Cardboard, or, you know. Sometimes I use uh, uh, fabric if I want to give intentation of uh, material. Obviously, it has to be in scale, so it's everything uh, makes sense. And then you know, the more more you go, the more you start to focus in some particular area. So I didn't want to do too much work in uh, you know all over the place. I don't like when the sculpt is all uh, overworked; it becomes too much, so you don't even see where where to look. 
it's almost like a painting when you have a, a lot of details, a lot of color, you, but you don't see the, the structure, you don't see the foundation, you know. You cover everything and uh, it becomes too, too much, you know. Then you start to add some details. Uh, then I have this kind of uh, magnified glasses. When you get older, you don't see closer, so you need to see a little bit better. There. <laughs> No, they're useful when you go when you work in a really small um, uh, area, especially in the stop motion. We were using that one as even as a, as a fini to see if it's because if it's going to look under this kind of magnified glasses, it's a good step uh, to see that it's going to work on the bigger screen. Because imagine when you when you work like this, then on the bigger screen is like hundred times bigger. So if you see little stroke uh, through the magnify, it's going to be a big stroke on the screen. So it was like a, a thing that we were using more in the, with the stop motion, it, it, and it makes sense. Even when you do, when you take picture with their high resolution camera, sometimes it's not good because you can see all the mistakes. So maybe don't buy 4K <laughs> yet because they give you too much resolution. So you see more, you see more than mistakes. And then when I did this one with the 2K camera, so it's good. So you can see, so it looks more, it looks smoother. No, I, 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 I smoothed it up a little bit more, the lower part. I, I, at the beginning, I wanted to kind of keep it more, more rough, like my sculpture, more, more, more rough. But then, obviously, it's, an, uh, it's a tutorial. So I wanted to show you how, how you smooth the, the, the sculpt too, how you bring it to a final, final stage. Yeah, this was, uh, this how easy now. Still collecting dust on the, on the shelf. So usually, I start from the, from the base. No, like I told you before, foundation, base, and then go up, start to build. I don't put the arms yet. The arms are like um, one of the final uh, stage. Because when you have the balance of the you know, hips uh, and shoulder, everything starts to get into a relation. In a relation. So I kind of get. I have a sponsor here, I see. <laughs> so I like, I like these old calipers. I'm not going to use the caliper to do, but, but those are kind of uh, old calipers that, you, that I found in New York in a, like a machinery shop. Those are really, really nice. Kind of nice shapes, you know, nice to Usually, you know, I use it to measure, you know, the limbs, uh, relations like this, through the drawing, then go back to the, to the sculpt. Uh, then I have... Uh, some tool. I was, I was looking for a wooden tool now. Let's see if I put it. Yeah. So I, I like this one. This is one of my, let's say, first tool that I'm using. You know, six box. It's good to, you know, maybe to move around the clay. Yeah, you can find on Amazon. But don't buy on Amazon. Buy local. Then I start to shape, uh, start to work on the body. No, I go, I go with the floor now. So I have, I have an idea of what I'm looking. Then I start to look the the overall, you know, the different angles, different uh, uh, area of the, for example, this view. So I start to work more on this shape here. Then I start to work on the on the pose, maybe a little bit more. And then I kind of keep it loose because you know maybe the the gestuality can give you a nice uh, shape, you know, nice. Nice uh, idea for the next shape that you're gonna work, you know. What kind of setup do you use for photographing your sculptures? 
it's like a like a photo booth. So I have a, like a background, and then a three point three point light, and then a diffuse light on top, and then it depends on the kind of uh, you know kind of image that you want you want to create with your sculpt. You can more you can have more dramatic lighting or more diffuse lighting, more soft lighting. So it depends on what you what do you want to tell with your sculpture, with your pictures? Then you have to remember to put the glasses, you know? Maybe you can see what you're doing. <laughs> No, it, 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 no, I just use clay, yeah, because then, then, because then you can reuse it. Because sometimes when you when you feel, for example, in, um, in Shark Tail, I was using uh, um, aluminum foil, and then we were kind of compact the, the air and then start to uh, put together the, because there were big sharks, you know. And uh, but then then it's tricky because when you when you bake it, sometimes it can collapse because if it's inside it's empty, so it can collapse. So at the end of the day, I was using more clay, but then they were getting really heavy. Then you have to carry around the studio. It, was, it, was, it wasn't easy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you have to seal, you have to seal it, you know. You have to No, usually I I spray I, I spray like a matte coat. So it kind of seal the the sculpt and the silicone cures. But with the new silicone even you you can cast it even like this. Yeah, this is what the guy told me where I buy the silicone. But I always, I always seal it before. Yeah, yeah. This is the clay that you, you see. There are some white stuff. This is a silicone that goes in through the clay when when you, when you do the cast. So you can reuse it. You know, I'm, I'm reusing the clay. I, I destroyed the the original. If if I would have cast this one, then I, I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy it. You know, later. And then you can reuse the clay. No. Which studio? <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, we disappear. <laughs> we die. <laughs> no, on Shark Tank we were uh, five. I mean, we were, it was me, Rafael. I mean, I mean we were in uh, Shark Tank four, three. Me, you, and Dusty. No, the, that, that's it. Demon too? No. Four. So it depends, you know. And, uh, then in, in, uh, Cinder Butter was uh, just me and Demon. Demon Bard, you know, the other sculptor. You know Demon? You don't know Demon? Yeah, you know Demon. <laughs> so it was just us, and then, and then there was, no, there was another guy, the uh, Gritz. He was doing a really, really talented sculpture. Sorry? My favorite sculptor? They're all dead. <laughs> no, I, li I, li I like Trobescoi, Paolo Trobescoi, I like Bug Rembrandt Brugatti, I like Bernini. Uh. You know, I always, when I go in Europe, I always try to, to go see the museums, you know, where, where there are the sculpture, try to study, try to, you know, obviously, you know, get depressed when you see the, the, their sculpture. But. <laughs> 
but uh, no, this guy were good. <laughs> we are using clay, but they were using they were using no. But they were the, the, so basically the maquette is start when uh, long time you know with the Greeks you know they were doing sketches. They, those were called maquette before they were doing the the, the marble you know and they, they were using the maquette as a, as a starting point to take measurement. So that was uh, why it's called maquette you know. Yeah, that, that is one of my favorite pom pom. Yeah, that was it's really. <laughs> Not it was Nico. Nico liked that one. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's funny because when you go see museums, you discover people that they are really, really good that they are known. You know, so there's. And it's nice to discover new artists too. Going around do a demo like I'm doing no, <laughs> no, uh, no. But I think I think now with the new tools, you know, with the, with the for example, after Spider-Man, this year I'd, I'd, it was a good year. You know, there were a lot of studio that they were willing to to do more and more sculpture. You know, so so this year was a good year for me. You know, last year was was a good year too, but maybe less than less than this year. So it depends from how is the producer, the studio, if they believe it, if it. If you are able to sell that year to do more, uh, more sculpture, so may maybe there is a few. I think there is a, there is a there is a comeback. I think, I hope. <laughs> there was a, I don't know what I'm going to do, but no, I, I use the CG, but it's, I don't have the same fun to do. You know, obviously the studio. If they request to do the CG, you do the CG, but then you suffer. So you do more. So you do more sculpture. You know, usually. I work on uh, different uh, different uh, sculpt at the time, so I have like two or three sculpts. Even when I do CG, I do I have a sculpt there that when I, when I feel uh, kind of depressed, I go back and I start to push and play, and then I go back to do the Z brush for ten minutes, and then I go back to do. Uh, <laughs> you know. So usually it takes longer the process <laughs> to finish the CG, you know. But, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe you know what I mean. So, but uh, you know, it's it's a good tool. And then you know there are there are young kids. I was talking today with, with them about this. You know there are young kids that are faster than you. So what are you gonna do? You can't compete. They are cheaper too. So that is that is the other thing. So the studio consider you know the yeah. It's all about the money at the end of the day. So unfortunately. Hmm. I was drawing, and then uh, I got lazy, and then uh, I don't draw anymore. <laughs> now, then I bought the iPad, and so I said, OK, so I can draw more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching Netflix. No, no. I'm <laughs> no. no, I'm watching the game, the soccer game. You know, so it's a nice, you know, 13 inch, high def. <laughs> I use the technology. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should, I, should, I should draw more, yeah. The problem when you get older, you get lazy. You want to do less and less, you know. I guess. I don't know. Maybe. When you used Super Sculpey, did you have the same kind of process where you kind of just added chunks until you found a shape that you like? Uh, hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> no, because I was using more for for uh, for work. So, no, even with work, I do more. Uh, more and more like a shape wise, but uh, you know maybe, maybe I will do, I was doing it. I don't, I don't remember, to be honest, I don't remember, but I think so. Yeah. Sorry. So why, why did you put the arm armature after? After. 
because uh, you know I, I, I wanted to do I, I knew that I was going in this kind of direction but you know when you when sometimes when I put the arm the arms before it kind of uh, castrate the way I, I can I can sculpt I can change the the, the, the sculpture so I kind of like the, the you know usually the arms are the, the one of the last part that I'm that I'm putting together No, no, it doesn't crack. It doesn't crack. No, but it's more for you to to finalize the the shape, you know, as soon as possible to finalize the what would you want to tell with your sculpture. I told you how to do it. You, 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 did, you weren't listening. You weren't listening. Oh. Carter was the best student at the, the workshop, you know. <laughs> I, I told you everything, you know. I opened my books. Tell me what happens if this thing is written. Like, you come back and two days later, it's really hard. What do you do? No, you, you, can, you can warm it up with the. Yeah, with the hair dry or put in the sun and get so but then you have to be careful because you know, then it gets really, really soft, you know. So <laughs> what? It's rainy. <laughs> you wait you wait summer. No, at school, you know, we were doing like um, life drawing, but or even even uh, for example, in, uh, when I was uh, on Brave, so we were doing like uh, this Scottish, so that the kilt, so we had um, we had uh, a mannequin, so and we had the, the real they, they bought the real kilt, so they were busy. They 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 taught us how to how to dress. It was it was, it was kind of cool, you know, because you know, if you if you don't have the reference. It's impossible to 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 sculpt the folding of a kilt. You know, you need to have a real kilt there. So most of the time, I like to to have the. Uh, oh, sometimes, you know, maybe I pose uh, I pose myself in the way of the sculpt, uh, so I can imagine. Uh, for example, in this case, this guy has like this, or so maybe, and I, I look. Uh, you know, even if even if I have pants, like a jeans, uh, see where the folding are going. Try to understand. You know, where is the the pulling point of the folding? There's always a pulling point and a relax point. Try to get the weight of the, for example, if he has a leather, leather pants or, or the material so it can create a different uh, uh, lines, different shape, the weight. So then, then you start to think about more like uh, the, um, uh, if, if obviously there are use, use pants. So, you know, the, the, the boots, how, the, how, how you want to play with the, with the shape of the boots. You know, even the ring, even the, you know, obviously, we um, we walk, if you walk all day you have all this kind of ring on the shoe so try to mimic the same things in this kind of leather leather boots so try to think obviously when, when I'm sculpting I'm thinking all about this stuff you know maybe maybe it's like when you when like everybody's drawing is thinking the same you know sometimes I take reference even if it's not in the same pose try to imagine this character 
in this pose. I know maybe it sounds difficult to, but you know, you have to try to to see it in uh, in this way. And most of the time, I try to imagine myself uh, in this pose. Look at, try to if, if I'm outside of myself and look at me in this pose. You know, I'm using, or, or you can use a mirror too. You can use a mirror. You can use a. Uh, would be nice to have a costume like like the old illustrator that were they were doing live drawing uh, through through live models you know Lynn Decker these people people that were using pictures so they were re redo the re restage everything and take pictures yeah you know this stuff so I don't have to tell you you are all uh, professionals. Yeah, if I do a cape, I, I have uh, like a chicken wire. So when, uh, I don't know if I have uh, some sculpture there with a the cape. Yeah, I did a sculpture of Batman. So I did a structure uh, with the aluminum, aluminum wire. And then I, I use like a chicken wire. And then I put the clay on top. So for example, if this would have a long coat, I can uh, maybe, you know, you can, with this clay, you can, it can be, like a structural clay too. See if I want to have a long coat, I can do like this. Would you say it's, uh, like firm? it's pretty? It's pretty firm. It's pretty firm. Oh, oh there's a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course, yeah. Even if it's now, it's really soft. It can be. It is firmer than a super scorpion. Use what? You can, you can use that one, yeah. You can use that one. Or, or the pasta, you know, the, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were using uh, in the shark tail, I think. With the scalp, yeah. What's the name of this play again? It's CM50. I don't get paid by Chevron, I should, but. They should sponsor the at least you know, at least the clay, you know. So are you using the bad formula right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but with the with the old one I, I, I would I wouldn't be able to do like this. Would it be really, really hard? So you need I would have a you no, know, when I was going around for them, I did a one workshop in Toronto, we brought I, I, I we brought the I think I ship my, my oven, I think, from San Francisco. I put in the, we ship it. Because the, the clay was really, was really, really hard, you know. So you need to warm it up in a certain temperature, like I told you before, and then, uh, and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really, like, like, it, like this, when you sculpt it as the same consistency. So tell me when you're bored, as I'm stopping it. Eh? Are tired. Have you ever used wax for the bus wax bus? Sorry? Have you ever done any wax? Wax, huh? Uh, usually when I do the bronze, I, I, I pour wax into the mold. Yeah. And then I bring the wax to the, to the foundry. But you can sculpt directly with the wax, too. Maybe maybe try with this one and see if this is the clay that you like it, you know, and then uh, you know experiment other clays. Because maybe some people they like to have a, a more firm clay. So now I'm adding, so I don't subtract. So sometimes then I get to a point when I start to you know maybe I scoop more, so I, I start to carve. So there are people that they are adding more, people that are subtracting more. So maybe you have to find the clay that is better for you to to do this kind of uh, interaction with the piece. 
So that maybe could be. Like, I kind of like this one because I can, uh, you know, I can subtract, I can uh, add more, I can, uh, you know, play around with the, with with the shape better. It can go really, really fast. Uh, you see, in, uh, you know, in half an hour, you you can get an idea where you're gonna go, and then you can start to develop more. The the so the next step would be to go there, start to redefine more the lines, maybe. You know the head start to define some area, start to think about you know the, the shape of the head. Maybe you work on uh, on the shoulder, start to define more the eyes, the eye bag, expression. So do we have some producer here? No, no producer, right? So you, usually the process is pretty fast, you know. But when uh, you know, when you do your stuff, is is faster than uh, than when you are in pro in production. So you know what I mean. No, and then the next step, maybe you start to delineate a little bit more the. The rhythm with this kind of uh, wrinkles there, the pants start to redefine more the, the lower leg. Try to give like a movement flow. When you are in production and you're receiving uh, feedback and more uh, direction, do you find yourself doing more iterations of the same sculpt, or do you find yourself just Editing your sculpt in front of you. Uh, it depends. Sometimes you know it's funny because when you do the first takes, is the one that uh, most of the time is the the right one, and then you know the process start to you start to go around, start to change, uh, change. Uh, and it happened uh, once with, uh, when um, I was working on Simbad on uh, one <laughs> on the sculpture. I was working with uh, William. It was a funny guy. So we start to in one direction, and we start. So I took picture of all the process, one direction. Da, 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 da. So we're going all around, and then at the seven takes, it start to get familiar, and then I didn't <laughs> check there. So basically, we, were, we went back to the starting point, and then he was like, okay, okay, now, now we are there, now we are getting there, now it's, it's there. So what do you mean you are getting there? And then I said, no, we were there like a week ago. I said, no, 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 yeah. And then I didn't believe, so I went there. At the time, I had this little crappy digital camera. So that you can put the date. So I was putting the date of each uh, takes. And then I went there. There was no photo. I don't even know if it was Photoshop. So I were, I were there, showed the stuff, and then he, and then he didn't believe it. Said, so really? Well, I said, yeah, I told you. I said, well, I'm sorry. No. And they're super nice guys. So I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You really apologize. <laughs> that was fine. My tap, it, it still happened now, yeah? Now I'm working on one sculpture, then, uh, yeah. I don't know if it's somebody's here. No, I can't say. But uh, you know, I, I did in a way, and then I said, "No, go the other way." And now we are going back to the same way that it was uh, like a month before. So, but you know, you know for, for me it's fine because you can change until uh, you know you can go, you can keep going. The problem is that the producer is going to see, is going to see that the the budget start to levitate for the sculpture, you know, because uh, <laughs> yeah, I get paid by the week, so you know, another week, okay, another week, another week. I don't charge when I have to wait for the notes, so a friend of mine is doing so but maybe I should do the same. Do you usually go back and forth on the same sculpture or do you start again completely? No, usually it's the same sculpture. Yeah. And then for example with the now I with the, with this with this kind of process I learned that uh, when I get to a point that the, the face like but then they want to change the face, so sometimes I chop the face, I read you a new face, or uh, or uh, or I do a cast of the face. Especially I learned it with Henry Selick because uh, you're recording all this stuff, so I'm not going to get screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Time lapse. Okay. And uh, it, it basically, the, we did a face, and then uh, we did a change. Then he wanted to go back to the face that we had before, but we didn't have it anymore. So it was a nightmare to try to get closer to the one that we had. So the next, uh, next sculpture, we did some change on the face, and so I cast it. I cast, asked the guy, I said, Martin, can you cast the face? So we did a really quick mold. Usually you can kind of push the silicone and do a really, really fast cure. 
So in half an hour, we had a, 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 a clay cast of the face, so I can do the change. And then I start to, I start to implement this kind of process in my, in my workflow now. For example, I was working on a project, they were asking, uh, no, it's funny because when you do the study, they say, okay, can you get 10% uh, less or 10% more? And then I say, what do you mean 10%? You know, 10% is like, it's like this, you know, it's not. And then, uh, so now, now with, the, with the scanner, so you can scan it, that you can 3D print it, do the 10%, 8%, 5%, 10%. So you can do all the, so they're happy, so you can swap. So this is the next step. So this is the next evolution of the, the mold. And I think, no, it's working, but then, yeah, but then, uh, yeah. So you have, to, you have to try to play smart too when you, when you, do, when you do stuff for, for production. No, the thing that you have to, you don't have to get attached to the scope, so you have to be able to, to, to learn how to step back and then do this drastic change. For example, with Henry, I learned uh, that, um, because he's, he's a good artist, he's, he's, a, he's a draftman, so he can draw, he can, you know, he's, a, he's a good artist. So I learned that uh, with the timing, it's better if uh, I was giving him the, 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 um, the exactor, so to cut the scope. So that was, uh, yeah, no, and then, no, I learned that when you do this one, they start to get more engaged, more involved in your sculpture. So they start to get more, uh, uh, they participate in more, they are on, owning more the scope. So, it, so it's easy for you, so you can get approved faster. Because, you know, you know, they do the change. So for example, I remember one was the nose. He cut the nose, then we did redo it. So I saved the nose. They say, no, save the nose, I save the nose, yeah. So I put it in the corner, <laughs> then uh, just in case we could go back, so you could chop the nose, put the old nose. So you do stuff like this. So you have to play, try to play smart, try to find the, uh, to save your life, you know, because otherwise, you, you know, you, you, you can get crazy with stuff like this, you know. You can, uh, you know, you can keep going changing, and obviously, you know, sometimes you, you have a, you have time, uh, uh, time of the production. So it's a certain, uh, okay, I think I call it that. C certain, uh, certain uh, schedule, and uh, and then obviously the price of the production le levitate, you know. And then at the end of the day, you know, you are the guy that uh, you know you are too expensive. So it's all, yeah, it's not that the, the, the producer or the director change mind uh, ten times, you know. <laughs> Especially in the meeting, they don't tell you that, you know, <laughs> yeah, so that is the, the thing. So, you know, you know, in a, in half an hour, you know, you, you can get something like this. Obviously, the next step is to push it more and start to, you know, but you, you can start to feel the character. So this is a point, uh, usually when uh, I do something like this, maybe a little bit more refined, make sure that, uh, you know, you feel the, uh, the feeling of the sketch that the, the designer did, if I work with some, from somebody else's design. And then I send uh, this kind of, uh, level of, uh, then if they like, because it would be easier for, from this stage to maybe change the leg, you know, you can take the legs and then move it like this, you know? <laughs> and then, <laughs> so it's easy on the, on the rough stage, but then when you start to put more details and then they start to change and it happen, it happens, so that is a little bit more frustrating because uh, you can waste uh, weeks of work, especially when the clay is really, really soft in this, in this stage, yeah. So I guess, what, do you like my Spider-Man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. What is it? An Indian? No, I can't yeah. So I, I, got, I got my goal, yeah. <laughs> so th th yeah, this is a, like, you know, a quick sketch just to show you the thinking behind. And then, uh, you know, if you have more questions before we close it up. No, no clapping, no clapping, please. no. no. <laughs> if you want to clap, clap. Thank you. Thank you.